So with that, let's talk about what makes platform business models so successful. The first thing that, I, that I've already mentioned is the idea of openness. Platforms open themselves out to external participation and so they are not limited by the resources they have internally. They're able to dip into resources in the ecosystem and leverage those resources. As a result of this, platforms start benefiting from network effects where more producers coming on board make the platform more valuable because of the resources they bring on board. That attracts consumers from the other side and more consumers coming on board make the platform more valuable because for a producer, this becomes a good channel to market. And so if you look at all of the examples of successful platforms today, whether it is uh, startups like Airbnb or incumbents like GE, in all these cases, we see the rise, the creation of network effects as the single point at which the platform becomes defensible and starts winning over its competitors. What happens at that point is as more producers come on board, more consumers want to come on the platform. As more consumers come on board, more producers want to come on the platform. And eventually you have this kind of a winner take all where any other platform that comes in does not succeed in attracting the ecosystem with the same uh, level of intensity because all of the ecosystem is coalescing around this existing platform. As I mentioned earlier, when you start seeing an ecosystem growing, you need to govern the ecosystem. And governance is typically about asking two questions. What is the incentive for participation and who can participate and how, what kind of rights and uh, influence do they have on the platform? More importantly, all of this is achieved through carefully architecting feedback loops. Feedback loops could be at the level of an individual participant, it could be at the level of a system. At the level of an individual participant, it could be something as simple as you getting a notification on Facebook when your friend uh, posts something on Facebook. So that feedback mechanism brings you back and then your activity brings that person back as well. Yeah. At the level of a system, a feedback mechanism may work in many different ways. As a, plat as a platform like Uber, for example, starts benefiting from uh, more, uh, starts seeing more rides taking place in a particular city, it starts observing patterns about how rides are, are uh, hailed at various points in the city at various points in uh, time during the day. And it can then use those patterns to orchestrate the ecosystem towards various uh, parts of the city based on uh, what the data predicts. So that's an example of a system level feedback loop. So what, what, what drives the platform is carefully architecting all of these feedback loops. What we missed in a traditional pipeline model was because of a lack of connectivity, we could not create these real-time feedback loops. Pipelines had a very long lag in their feedback loop and that prevented a lot of different things from happening, all of which can be enabled on a platform business model. And finally, what we've seen today is that a few platforms are gathering a lot of data, they're learning from this data, and they are becoming increasingly powerful because of all of this data coalescing around these few central platforms.